Hello everybody, my dear students, you are on the Dr. Y channel and I am Dr. Armen. Dr. Armen, Professor Armen Astvatsatri, I'm from Yerevan, Armenia, so let's go on and continue our topic. And today's question is all, all around uh, scleroderma or systemic sclerosis. Traditional name in our region, big region of uh, XUSSR, unfortunately XUSSR, is a systemic scleroderma. So actually systemic scleroderma is a systemic sclerosis. So what is systemic sclerosis? Scler systemic sclerosis is quite a rare chronic disease of unknown cause characterized by diffuse fibrosis and vascular abnormalities in the skin, joints and internal organs, especially the esophagus, lower gastrointestinal tract, lungs, heart and kidneys. Common symptoms include renal syndrome, polyarthralgia, dysphagia, heartburn and swelling and eventually skin tightening skin tightening and contractures of the fingers. Lung, heart and kidney involvement accounts for most death. Diagnosis is clinical but laboratory tests support the diagnosis and aid in the, pro in the prognostication. Specific treatment is difficult and emphasis is often on the treatment of complications. Systemic sclerosis is about four times more common among women than men. It's most common among people aged 20 to 50 and rare in children. Okay, so continuing of the questions, etiology. No etiology. Uh, etiology of systemic sclerosis. Immunologic mechanisms and heredity. Certain human leukocyte and antigen subtypes play a role in etiology. Systemic sclerosis like syndromes, uh, uh, systemic sclerosis like syndromes have been associated with vinyl chloride, bleomycin, pentazocyne, epoxy and aromatic hydrocarbons, con contaminated rapeseed oil or L-tryptophan. Pathophysiology, pathology, pathophysiology uh, of systemic sclerosis. Pathophysiology involves vascular damage and the activation of fibroplasts, fibroblasts, collagen and other extracellular proteins in various tissues are overproduced. In systemic sclerosis, the skin develops more compact collagen fibers in the reticular dermis, epidermal thinning, loss of red, red pages, epithelial extensions that project into the underlying connective tissue, and a toffee of dermal appendages. T cells may accumulate an extensive fibrosis in the dermal and subcutaneous layers uh, develops. In the nail folds, capillary loops dilate and some microvascular loops are lost. In the extremities, chronic inflammation and fibrosis of the synovial membrane and surface and periarticular soft tissue occur. Tissues occur. Esophageal motility becomes impaired and the lower esophageal sphincter becomes incompetent. Gastroesophageal reflux and secondary strictures can develop. The interstitial muscularis mucosa degenerates leading to pseudo-diverticula in the colon and ileum, interstitial and periprobronchial fibrosis or intimal hyperplasia, hyperplasia of small pulmonary arteries can develop. If long-standing, pulmonary hypertension can result. Diffuse myocardial fibrosis or cardiac conduction abnormalities occur. Intimal hyperplasia and arcuate arteries can develop within the kidneys, causing renal ischemia and hypertension. Systemic sclerosis varies, varies in severity and progression. 
ranging from generalized skin thickening with rapidly progressive and often fatal visceral involvement, diffuse systemic sclerosis, to isolated skin involvement, often just the fingers and face, and slow progression over several decades before visceral disease develops. The later form is termited, is termed limited cutaneous scleroderma, or so-called CREST syndrome. In addition, systemic sclerosis can overlap with other autoimmune rheumatic, rheumatic disorders, for example, sclerodermatomyositis, a tight skin and muscle weakness is indistinguishable from autoimmune myositis and mixed connective tissue disease. Classification of systemic sclerosis. Systemic sclerosis is classified as limited systemic sclerosis, crest syndrome, generalized systemic sclerosis with diffuse skin involvement, systemic sclerosis science scleroderma. So in limited uh, systemic sclerosis, crest syndrome, huh? Calcino, uh, calcinosis cutis, C, calcinosis cutis, Raynaud syndrome, esophageal dysmotility, sclerodactyly, sclerodactyly and teleangiectasis. Patient, this is crest. Uh, patients develop skin uh, tightening over the face and distal. Uh, to the elbows and knees, and may also have gastroesophageal reflux disease. This type is characterized by slow progression and is often complicated by pulmonary progression. Pulmonary hypertension, of course. Huh? So this type of, by slow progression is often complicated ah, sorry, by pulmonary hypertension progression. Uh, so uh, once again, huh? I'm sorry. Sorry, so this type, limited systemic sclerosis, uh, is characterized by slow progression, is often complicated by pulmonary hypertension. In generalized systemic sclerosis with diffuse skin involvement, patients have Raynaud syndrome and gastrointestinal complications. This type typically involves rapidly interstitial lung disease and scleroderma renal crisis are the major complications. In systemic sclerosis and scleroderma, patients have systemic sclerosis-related antibodies and visceral manifestations of the disease, but, not, but no skin tightening. Clinics. So, once again, huh, my friends, clinics, uh, we understand this is a science, symptoms and science. Well, it's a question of tradition. So, clinical science and symptoms of uh, systemic sclerosis. So the most common initial symptoms and signs of systemic sclerosis is a Reno, uh, is a Reno syndrome. So R Reno syndrome and in the insidious swelling of the distal extremities with gradual thickening of the skin of the fingers. Polyarthralgia is also prominent. Gastrointestinal disturbances, for example, heartburn, dysphagia or respiratory complaints for example, dyspnea, are occasionally the first manifestations. Skin and nail manifestations. So swelling of the skin is usually symmetric and progression and progresses to induration. It may be confined uh, to the fingers sclerodactyly and hands, or it may affect most or all of the body. The skin eventually becomes taut or taut shiny or hyperpigmented or hyper hyperpigmented the face becomes mask mask like and teleangiectasis may appear on the fingers chest face lips and tongue however in some patients skin can soften to uh, soften to variable degrees subcutaneous calcifications may develop usually on the fingertips palps and over bony eminence Digital ulcers are common, especially on the fingertips, overlying the finger joints or over calcinotic nodules. Abnormal capillary and microvascular loops in the nails can be seen 
with an ophthalmoscope or dissecting microscope. Joint, joint manifestations, polyarthralgias or mild arthritis can be prominent. Flexion contractures may develop in the fingers, wrists and elbows. Friction rubs may develop over the joints, ten, uh, tendon, sheath and large bursi. Gastrointestinal manifestations uh, Esophageal dysfunction is most frequent, visceral disturbance and occurs in most patients. Dysphagia, usually retrosternal, usually develops first. Acid reflux can cause heartburn and stricture. Barrett esophagus occurs in one in one third of the patients and predisposes to complications. For, for example, adenocarcinoma. Hypomotility of the small bowel causes bacterial overgrowth that can lead to malabsorption. Uh, air may penetrate the damaged bowel wall and the visible on X-rays pseumatosis interstitialis. Leakage of bowel contents into the peritoneal cavity can cause peritonitis. Distinctive white moused pseudo diverticula can develop in the colon. Biliary cirrhosis or biliary cirrhosis, biliary correctly, biliary cirrhosis may develop in patients with limited systemic sclerosis crest syndrome. Paleopulmonary manifestations, lung involvement generally progresses indolently with substantial individual, individual variability, but is a common cause of death. Lung fibrosis and interstitial lung disease are common and can impair gas exchange, leading to exertional dyspnea and restrictive disease with eventual respiratory failure. Acute alveolitis, potentially response to therapy, can develop. Esophageal dysfunction can lead to aspiration pneumonia. Pulmonary hypertension may develop, as can, as can heart failure, both of which are poor prognostic findings. Pericarditis with effusion or pleurisy can occur. Cardiac arrhythmias are common. So then we've got renal manifestations. Severe, often sudden onset renal disease, scleroderma, renal crisis, may occur uh, most commonly in the first far four to five years in patients who have usually have diffuse scleroderma and uh, RNA polymerase three antibody. It's often uh, heralded by sudden, severe hypertension with features of thrombotic microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. It can, can also occur without acute hypertension or in systemic sclerosis signs scleroderma. And therefore, clinical suspicion is required to make the diagnosis. Corticosteroid use is a risk factor for development scleroderma renal crisis so and diagnosis ah, okay no also got another question but let's talk about diagnosis so first of all it's a clinical criteria and antibody testing systemic sclerosis should be considered in patients with renal syndrome typically musculoskeletal or skin manifestations or unexplained dysphagia malabsorption, pulmonary fibrosis, pulmonary hypertension, cardiomyopathy, or conduction disturbances. Diagnosis of systemic sclerosis, science scleroderma, should be considered in patients with unexplained visceral findings, for example, pulmonary hypertension. Diagnosis of, diagnosis of systemic sclerosis can be obvious in patients with combination of combinations of classic manifestations such as Raynaud syndrome, with abnormal nail fold, uh, nail fold capillary findings, dysphagia, and tight skin. However, in some patients, the diagnosis can be made clinically, and confirmatory laboratory tests can increase the probability of the disease, of disease, but their absence doesn't exclude it. <laughs> 
doesn't exclude it. So antinuclear antibodies, A, N, A, ANA, are present in more than 90% of patients often with antinuclear uh, anti -nuc uh, nu nuclear pattern. Rheumatoid factor is positive in one third of patients. Antibody to centrometric protein, anticentromere antibody, occurs in the serum of a high proportion of patients with limited disease, but it's not specific. Patients with generalized diffuse systemic sclerosis are more likely than those with limited disease to have anti-SCI-70 topo, topo isomerase 1 antibodies. RNA polymerase 3 is associated with generalized systemic sclerosis, sclerodermal renal click crisis and cancer. Fibrillarin U3 RNP, fibrillarin antibody is also associated with diffuse disease. The most cost effective way to test for antibodies is to test for ANA. Antinuclear antibodies, uh, uh, anti SCI 70, and ant uh, anti centromere antibodies first. If results are negative, testing for other antibodies should be considered based on clinical manifestations. Reasonable. The, to help establish the diagnosis, clinicians can also consult the American College of Rheumatology, ACR, European League uh, Against Re uh, Rheumatisms, EULAR, classifications criteria for systemic sclerosis. ACR EULAR criteria for systemic sclerosis include skin thickening uh, on the fingers of, of both hands, uh, fingertip lesions, for example, ulcers, spitting scars, teleangiectasia, Abnormal nail fold capillaries, for example, ectatic blood vessels, dropout areas on capillaroscopy examinations, for example, seen uh, with an ophthalmoscope or dissecting microscope, pulmonary arterial hypertension, and or interstitial lung disease, Raynaud syndrome, and systemic sclerosis related to antibodies. These criteria are weighted, weighted in some cases according to sub-criteria and added to, general, to generate a score. Scores above certain threshold are classified as definite systemic sclerosis. As part of baseline evaluation, pulmonary function testing, high-resolution chest computer tomography with supine and prone position to ensure that early changes are not due to atelectasis, and echocardiography are used to document cardiopulmonary involvement, interstitial lung disease and or pulmonary hypertension and severity of disease. The initial evaluation is indicated even in patients who do not report dyspnea, cough or exercise intolerance. Echocardiography and pulmonary function testing should be done every one to two years thereafter. thereafter. Not thereafter. What's next? Differential diagnosis. Hmm. Systemic scleroderma, also known as a systemic sclerosis, uh, shares similarities with other conditions, and this diagnosis may require ruling out other possible causes of similar symptoms. Some of the conditions that may be considered in the differential diagnosis of systemic scleroderma include localized scleroderma, Localized scleroderma is a milder form of scleroderma that affects the skin and the underlying tissues, but doesn't involve internal organs. It typically presents with localized areas of skin thickening without the systemic manifestations seen in systemic scleroderma. Skin biopsy and imaging studies can help differentiate between localized and systemic scleroderma. Other connective tissue diseases, systemic scleroderma belongs to a group of autoimmune diseases known as the connective tissue, uh, connective tissue, yeah, diseases, sorry. Other conditions, other connective tissue diseases, such as systemic lupus erythematosus, rheumatoid arthritis, and mixed connective tissue diseases may have overlapping symptoms with systemic scleroderma. And careful evaluation of clinical features, blood tests, 
and imaging studies can help differentiate between them. Autoimmune conditions with skin manifestations. There are other autoimmune conditions that can cause skin changes similar to those seen in systemic scleroderma, such as dermatomyositis, eosinophilic fasciitis, and graft versus host disease. These conditions may also present with skin thickening or hardening, muscle weakness, and other symptoms that can resemble systemic scleroderma. An additional diagnostic test may be needed to differentiate them. Other fibrotic lung disease, systemic scleroderma can cause lung involvement, such as pulmonary fibrosis or pulmonary hypertension. However, there are other fibrotic lung disease, such as idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, sarcoidosis, and hypersensitivity, pneumonitis, that can present with similar respiratory symptoms and radiological findings. Lung function tests, imaging studies, and other diagnostic tests can help differentiate th these conditions from systemic scleroderma. Vascular disease. Systemic scleroderma can cause vascular manifestations such as renal phenomenon and digital ulcers. However, however, other vascular diseases such as vasculitis, atherosclerosis, and thrombongitis, obliterans, Burger's disease can also cause similar symptoms. Careful evaluation of clinical features, blood tests, and imaging studies can help distinguish between these conditions. And finally, treatment. Yeah, systemic scleroderma or systemic sclerosis treatment. No management. Uh, there is currently no actually cure for systemic scleroderma, and treatment is focused on managing symptoms, slowing disease progression, it's possible, if it's possible, and preventing complications. The treatment plan for systemic scleroderma is typically tailored to the individual patient's needs and may involve multidisciplinary approach involving various medical specialists such as rheumatologists, dermatologists, pulmonologists, cardiologists, gastroenterologists, and other specialists. So about medications. Medications are often used to manage specific symptoms and slow down the progression of systemic scleroderma. They may include immunosuppressive drugs, drugs that suppress the immune system, such as corticosteroids, prednisone, for example, and other immunosuppressive medications, methotrexate, uh, mycophenolat mofetil, cyclophosphamate, may be used to reduce inflammation and control autoimmune response. Proton pump inhibitors, such as omeprazole and azomeprazole, uh, may be pre prescribed uh, to manage uh, acid reflux and prevent complications related to gastrointestinal involvement. Uh, calcium channel blockers, medications such as nifidipine, Nifidipine or amlodipine may be used to help manage Raynaud's phenomena. A common symptom in symmetric scleroderma that causes narrowing of blood vessels in response to cold or stress. Vasodilators, medications like sildenafil or bosentan may be used to manage pulmonary hypertension, a serious complication of systemic scleroderma that affects the blood vessels in the lungs. Other symptomatic treatments, depending on the specific symptoms and organs affected, other medications such as pain relievers, anti-inflammatory drugs, and medications to manage, to manage gastrointestinal motility, for example, prokinetics, may be prescribed. Physical and occupational therapy, Okay, so physical and occupational therapy may be recommended to help manage joint stiffness, muscle weakness, and other musculoskeletal symptoms. These therapies may include exercises, stretch, stretches, and techniques to improve joint flexibility, muscle strength, and functional ability. Skin care is an important another. Skin care uh, is an important part of managing systemic scleroderma and the skin is often affected by thickening and tightening. Regular skin care, including moisturization, protection from cold and ultraviolet exposure, 
and wound care for digital ulcers may be recommended. Pulmonary management. Regular monitoring of lung function and early intervention for pulmonary complications is critical in systemic scleroderma. Pulmonary rehabilitation, supplemental oxygen and other interventions may be prescribed to manage pulmonary fibrosis, pulmonary hypertension and other respiratory symptoms. Cardiac management. Cardiac involvement in systemic scleroderma may require management of heart-related complications such as arrhythmias, pericarditis and heart failure. And medications, lifestyle changes and other interventions may be recommended by a cardiologist, of course. Gastrointestinal management. So, gastrointestinal involvement in systemic scleroderma may require management of symptoms such as acid reflux, difficulty swallowing and bowel motility issues. Diet modifications, medications, and other interventions may be recommended by a gastroenterologist. And finally, emotional and psychological, psychosological, psychological support, coping with a chronic disease like systemic scleroderma, can be emotionally changing, coping huh? with chronic disease like a systemic scleroderma really is, can be emotional challenging. Supportive measures such as counseling, support groups, and self-care strategies can help manage the emotional impact of the disease. So thank you very much, my dear friends, for your attention. Re-listening this video several times to understand what I'm, what I'm talking about. Just understand this. Uh, um, oh, immunology is quite difficult. Uh, Difficult to understand it, but anyway, so re listening several times to understand, to get it and nail it and fix it. So, see you in another lecture and God bless you. Da, don't forget to follow and subscribe the channel. Bye bye.